Um, uh, funny how the world works, right? So our first really steamy hot day was the first day in full pads. Talked to our guys just about what that meant before today. Um, to come out here and have it be this hot was actually a blessing for all of us. Um, thought our guys really handled it well. Um, came out of it pretty injury free. Um, uh, it's a work week that we've got behind us. We don't ever get practice six be, uh, again. So uh, everybody else in the country has got the same opportunity that we have. So uh, our guys maximize it. We'll take advantage of this afternoon with recovery. Uh, get over and watch the film. Uh, jump into some install. We'll take Sunday as a day day off. Uh, by NCAA rules, I got to give them a day. So we'll just use that as a recovery day. We can work with them a couple hours. Um, but really, really excited for the first week to be behind us and be where we're at. You had family out here today. Was that you know your family plus other coaches' family? You know, during today? the during the week, they're not in school yet, but a lot of our kids are in you know different camps and whatnot. So I knew Saturday would be a lot of people out there. And, um, actually, it's worked out pretty nice. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been around before. I think the the grass field looks really good. Our guys were excited. It went so well out there yesterday. Um, being the first day in full pads, I want to stay back out there today, and that's what we did. And uh, yeah, it's always fun to have family around. Coach, weekend here. Are you starting to get an idea of what the depth chart's going to look like? I think so. You know, we'll have a pretty pretty intense uh, personnel meeting uh, tomorrow. I got that catch. Get my foot. Can't push that, baby. Um, yeah, I think we'll have a pretty good uh, idea, at least after six practices, especially some of the freshmen, you know, who we haven't seen before. But then there's so many guys, Kalon Tolson, Dreek Barnes, Jake Hansen at the linebacker position alone, who we haven't seen before, right? Um, uh, guys that got out there and and and. and we're in the middle of practice today. Alex Palcho was out there. Uh, Bobo was out there. Jamal Woods. And um, uh, there's one more guy. There was three guys that, oh, Kaylon Tolson had, had team reps today for the first time. So if everything goes well, they feel good out of it today, then they'll actually be allowed to practice uh, in the scrimmage situation on Monday. What's the uh, process for something like Epstein out there doing Indies? What's the process for him to get him back? And yeah, so he's actually cleared. He's, he's 100% uh, on board. Um, we're doing a maintenance with him where he practices basically every other day. So this week they practice guys under his schedule practiced every, so practice Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. We did a lot of uh, soft tissue recovery, so specific rehab, and also conditioning for them that's very position specific. Uh, we'll get tomorrow off and those guys should be allowed to scrimmage on Monday. What favorite do you think you've been most pleased with here after the first tour? Um, their attitude, their energy. Um, you know, there's, there's a coach, you're always gonna find things that you gotta improve, but I thought overall, just their, uh, attitude, their demeanor, uh, the way they're communicating. There's a lot of times where I'm standing back and I'm, I'm obviously watching what's going on, but I'm listening to our guys that aren't on the field, just how they're communicating and talking. It's been very positive. You feel like you accomplished what you wanted to when you set out for this first week of camp? This first week, we really wanted to get just, you know, nothing really game plan wise, just kind of executing Illinois football, offense, defense, best teams. Got all four phases of the kicking game installed again from the spring, um, offensively, defensively put in some wrinkles from where we were last spring, and then today capped it off with a full day of pad. So uh, it's been a lot of fun in that regards. You guys looked a little tired out there. I mean, uh, being five days in the first day of pads, yeah. was it any uh, much of a transition going? Well, it was actually six days, right? So we practiced six. Monday, so today was the sixth day. I knew it was going to be a drag. I scheduled it that way. Um, by NCAA rules, we couldn't have any pads on, full pads, until today. Uh, tomorrow I'll have the day off, kind of recruit a little bit. The intention is to scrimmage Monday unless there's something dramatic happens that uh, I want to move it to Tuesday, but I think for the most part we'll stay on track and very, very happy with where they're at. You've seen some position switches, obviously, from the spring to that. Do you think you're about in the place where you're done, or do you evaluate after the first season? I think we'll add maybe one to two more players on our roster that aren't here yet. Um, and, and uh, um, you know, there's always the opportunity. We'll, we'll kind of sit down and evaluate tomorrow on Sunday our current roster, see if there's some guys that maybe help us at other positions. Maybe it won't be as dramatic, but maybe we want to use Max Rosenthal at a certain spot at the wire of the U. Maybe we want to use Casey Washington as a certain level as a wide receiver, uh, Isaiah at a certain slot, um, get a little bit more position specific as we, we focus in. But there's some good competition. Competition brings the best out of people, and I think our guys have done a good job of that. Jason Brandon looks like the starting quarterback. What's backing him up? You know, everybody's competing. There isn't. There's a depth chart because we had to start the start the week. Um, you know, BP's obviously got us a really good chance to be successful if we play the game tomorrow. Like I saw TP said the other day, we'd probably be the first guy in the game. But uh, not really worried about depth chart. Worried about execution. We're worried about how guys play. Um, uh, we'll worry about depth chart about ten days after the opener. When you mentioned that you're adding a couple guys to the roster, is that a freshman, a transfer, a walk-on, some combination of that? Wait and see. Uh, uh, the one thing that uh, I've been very happy with is to get our roster to 120. You know, to, you know, it's just quickly how things can change. Obviously, you know, 
uh, Jordan gets hurt, right? So now all of a sudden you're one. If we came in at 120, now we're down to 119. Um, I've had a couple guys get some injuries that might be out significant time, some, uh, especially some non-scholarship players, and all of a sudden that's going to take effect on your whole number. So we weren't at max 120, but that's where I want to get to. What do you want to take away from just getting in pads? I know obviously it's hot and things like that, but guys are always excited to put them on and I guess get a little closer to you know, football. Yeah, I, I, I made the comment on Wednesday when we went to half pack, today when we went full pads. Um, it shouldn't be, oh, we got full pads today. It should be, oh, we got full pads today, right? It's a, it's the outlook, it's the idea, the anticipation, and I think our guys have bought into that 100 times over. Um, the last four periods of practice today were probably the most intense. Uh, couldn't be more excited about just how they're handling that aspect, right? Like, it's full pads, it's a chance to play big boy football, and I think they really rose up to the challenge. Is there that same kind of anticipation for a scrimmage where it's, you know, maybe they're looking forward to moving yeah. on past the drills so and we'll, actually playing a little We'll bit. be in the stadium, right? So I think that's got to add something. Part of uh, when we practice in the stadium is we want to get used to the stadium. So we'll be in the stadium for our scrimmage and it'll be tackle football, right? So it'll be uh, no holes bar. It'll be scripted uh, some parts of it. Some of it will be unscripted where we're moving the ball, let the coordinators get used to calling plays. Uh, by NCAA rules, we only get two scrimmages before the opener. Uh, so this first scrimmage is a big one so much about talking and listening and it seems like communication from you guys and the point. That's something you wanted to ramp up. Was it about the level that you know you wanted to have and you got here? Yeah, you know what one of the things I stress these guys really was I can't control anything other paths. I can just control what's in front of us. And communication for me in every part of my life for fifty one years has been when you have good communication you usually have good results, right? When you have poor communication, now it's up for, for chance, right? And if we can communicate effectively as a staff we can effectively communicate with our players, the players can communicate to the coaches, and most importantly, if our players can communicate with each other, um, that's when you got something special. And I think the more talk we hear, right, uh, whether it be at the dinner table, whether it be in the locker room, whether it be in between meetings, whether it be out of practice, the more they're talking about football, the better chance we have. What does Sunday look like for the staff with no no practices? It's a lot of film, what's, what's You know, um, a lot of our guys are you know pretty faith-based, so I'll give them an opportunity to be with their families in the morning, um, uh, do what they want to do, what they choose to do. Um, we won't bring the players over, I think, first thing is scheduled at 1.30. Um, so it'll be a lot of uh, 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 just kind of review of today, get ourselves ready, and then post post meetings on Sunday at 4.30, and we'll do a lot of work on Sunday night to get ready for the Monday's group. Chase, I assume that uh, Monday you're going to try to in the late game situation. Yeah. Have you decided which coaches are going to be where, who's in the box? Well, the, the scrimmage, this first scrimmage will be very, very similar to a practice. We're going to conduct it offense, defense, special teams. Um, we're going to do a mock game eight days out from the from the scrimmage. It'll be what you're kind of referring to where the coaches are going to be in their respective game positions. Uh, our second scrimmage may have a little bit of that, but nothing comparable to like, we got a pretty good one in the spring game in that regard. Do you have officials? We do. On Monday? Yep, Monday, Tuesday, Monday and the next Monday. Chase and Sydney have really gone all in on this nutrition stuff in the last several months. How impressive is it for you as a head coach to see two guys really put that much into their bodies and keep themselves healthy? Well, it's discipline, right? Um, I think those guys uh, are kind of extremists in a lot of different things, right? They, they really are very well tuned in uh, to what their body is and, and how it uh, then correlates to how they perform. So uh, I'm all for all of our guys. They take, you know, Jade has done a tremendous job as our team nutritionist has really catered everybody's meals to what they uh, as specific as they can. Josh has really probably uh, has done as much change in that department than anything else since I've been here about the way we have supported our student athletes in fueling, which is fu fu food and uh, hydration. And uh, they're definitely guys that take full advantage of it. We talked to George earlier this week about the diversity of the wide receiver room. We talked about the diversity of the running back room. What do you like about the wide receiver room and just having different looks and different types? Well, there are new guys there, right? Like, so Casey Washington wasn't there in the spring. Uh, Jafar Armstrong wasn't there in the spring. Um, a variety of different guys kind of stepping into new roles. Isaiah Williams was there in spring, but he was a quarterback, right? So really three guys that can kind of see factor into what we're doing. I thought Hightower, uh, Davion Campbell had a, a good day yesterday. Um, uh, 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 there's a couple newcomers, freshmen that have, have stood out a little bit. So I'm excited about that group. And it's probably one of the groups that's changed dramatically, you know, since, uh, since the spring game. I know you've always been a run first kind of offense, you know, days of Wisconsin with the offensive line you have plus uh, Blake Gerasati and Jack Badenovich you guys have a pretty good up front going as camp starts and a lot of competition I guess too. I, I appreciate the question um, but if you look statistically at what I did right I had good running backs that a lot of people refer to but when we were successful we ran the ball for 200 and threw the ball for 200 can't get much more balanced than that right so like the key for us is to be balanced and the key for us is to do what we have to do to win games if it involves you know, running for 300, we're going to try to run for 300. If it throws 
ball's thrown for 300, we'll throw for 300. We'll do what we take to win, but um, my time at other places is behind me, right? Um, whether we want to view it as whatever we think it is or what it really was, uh, the fact is all I can worry about is what Illinois is. What do you think about the return of Blake? Blake's been awesome. Uh, you know, took all the reps today at guard, and all of a sudden switched to, you know, center at uh, the Devo practice. Um, great communicator, highly intelligent, great motor, a great fit for that program. Him and Bedovniak, I mean, both have been really impressive. Kevin yesterday talked. You guys have been here since December, January. You've only had 19 or so practices. Yeah. Going. How much are you still learning about your guy? I mean, I know it's been a lot of yeah. times, but not a lot of on the field. Today is practice 21 that we've been together, right? So. Expectations are always, you know, uh, something that takes a while to learn. Uh, and and I, I couldn't be more, again, I think our coaches, right, just getting used to each other. Even though a lot of these guys have been around me, they're in different roles, they're in different um, uh, uh, situations. They're in uh, guys, you know, offensive coordinator, defense coordinator, guys I've never worked with before. So uh, there's a lot of learning that the coaches have to take place and then carry it forward to me. Owen Hardy and Isaiah Gay that bring some new things. Can we expect to see those guys on the field together? Or opposite each other, or are they playing the same position? No, they're they're playing both. Uh, you know, in theory, outside linebacker, but they both play different roles. So we have uh, guys that play different uh, responsibilities in our scheme. Uh, but those two guys are very they're very different players, and um, very very unique skill sets in both of them. Um, uh, but they will be used. You know, one of the things that I think Kevin has done a really nice job with those guys is maximizing their strengths, minimizing their weaknesses, playing with extension, making them set the edge. The things that we really believe on on perimeter. Last question. Saw a picture of maybe the high school coaches Hall of Fame thing coming back. Oh up. yeah. What's that mean? Why is that important to you? Maybe bring back. Well, you know, from our opening press conference to where we are today, there's been nobody more important than our Illinois high school football players, coaches, programs. Um, I'm a former Illinois high school football player, uh, so uh, I think Brett was actually one of the ones that brought it up. I know Pat Ryan. We use. We're gonna uh, basically honor the reigning high school state champion every year in the. In the in, in memorial here and, and hang it in a way that you know they can come back and see themselves uh, you know being honored you know they it jumped out to me when um, I think it was Bedovniak made a comment that you know his last game when he played here he thought it was his last game and now he gets to come back here and play uh, on his home field I know Kendrick as well played one of his last games here and when I started hearing that that kind of turned it over in my mind um, uh, any way that we can outreach and and, and you know, bolster our, uh, our appreciation for the high school coaches. That's what we'll do. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Appreciate it.